Good afternoon. Welcome to our service. We pray that you would, or we ask that you would turn to number 401. 401, set my soul afire. Let's stand as we sing. Number 401. Standing as we sing. Set my soul afire, Lord, for thy holy word. Burn it deep within me. Let your voice be heard. Millions grope in darkness in this day and hour. I will be your witness. Fill me with thy power. Set my soul afire, Lord. Set my soul afire. Make my life a witness of thy saving power. Millions grope in darkness waiting for thy word set my soul afire lord set my soul afire set my soul afire lord for the lost in sin give to me a passion as i seek to win Help me not to falter, never let me fail. Fill me with thy spirit, let thy will prevail. Set my soul afire, Lord, set my soul afire. Make my life a witness of thy saving power millions grope in darkness waiting for thy word set a fire lord set my soul a fire set my soul a fire lord in my daily life Far too long I've wandered in this day of strife. Nothing else will matter but to live for Thee. I will be Your witness as You live in me. Set my soul afire, Lord. Set my soul afire. Make my life a witness of thy saving power. Millions grope in darkness, waiting for thy word. Set my soul afire, Lord. Set my soul afire. Well, get rested. This is a special, special night. Uh, we want to dedicate this to the Bach family and our other missionaries that we have in our church and these visiting missionaries that we have with us tonight. But I thought we'd start off with happy birthday to Mark Bach. Daddy Mark is going to have a birthday. Nobody doesn't tell me on how old you are. What, 66 or something like that? <laughs> Happy birthday to Mark. Ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Mark. Happy birthday to you and many more. We're hoping for, amen. You may be seated. You got a birthday Tuesday? Well, stand up, Fred. Stand up. 
We don't want anybody mad. Everybody stand up. We don't want anybody mad. You can miss my birthdays if you want to. Ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Freddie. Happy birthday to you and many more. Anybody else I've missed? All right, you may be seated. Thank you. What's your name? Is this? Titus. Titus, stand up. Stand up, Titus. All right, here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Titus. Happy birthday to you. Amen. And many more times we're hoping for. Anybody else before we sit down? I got y'all. You may be seated. We are honored and privileged to have the Bach family and uh, these other missionaries with us. And I see Mr. and Mrs. Cooley back there. We love Mr. and Mrs. Cooley. He's been a missionary. He's been a prison mis- mis- in the prison ministry. He's been an evangelist. He's been a pastor. And, and we love Mark Cooley and his wife, Bonnie. Now, I put some things together here. I don't know. We'll, uh, uh, those Khaleesi's children, would you come? Come on now, get up and come when I say come. You're going to sing for us. I've got it all written down here. When you, when you get past 40, you'll have to have notes. I want y'all to sing one song for me, okay? Among us, all that he does, all of his mercy and all of his love, in the pen of a writer, write every day, even this world could never contain. I have been blessed. The warmth in the winter, the flowers in spring. my table, a good place to sleep, clothes on my back, and shoes on my feet, oh, I have been blessed, I have been blessed, God so good to me, precious are his thoughts of you and me, no way I could count them, there's not enough time, so I'll just thank to praise him as long as I breathe, because I have been blessed. A father and mother, nurtured and raised, my sisters and brothers, memories made, our pastor to lead us, this altar to pray, stripes that can heal, and blood that can save, I have Blessed, God so good to me. Precious are his thoughts of you and me. No way I could count them. There's not enough time. So I'll just thank him for being so kind. God has been good, so good. I have been blessed. We live in a country. 
Y stands for freedom and what it is worth. She stands in the harbor as liberty calls. For all gave some, but some gave it all for me to be blessed. It's my shoulder to lean on when I am down. A rock where he leads me when I'm overwhelmed. Where he hides me under his wings. He's not just a song, he's the reason I sing. I have been blessed. I have been blessed, God's so good to me. Precious are his thoughts of you and me. No way I could count them, there's not enough time. So I'll just thank him for being so kind. God has been good, so good. I have been blessed. God has been good, so good. I have been blessed. Amen. Paul, do you know the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America? Let's all stand. Say pledge. Say pl let's all stand. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Paul, you lead us. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. You may be seated. I, play, I, I did the pledge this morning. Somebody told me I missed half of it, so I thought, well, I better let somebody else do it tonight. You'll be over 40 one day. Just hang in there now. Uh, what a blessing these uh, Khaleesi's. Khaleesi's. Is I getting that right? Close to it, isn't it? Uh, what a blessing you've been to us in the last few weeks, helping us, singing for us, and uh, just about being around fellowship and having Jonathan over, over at the parsonage. I want to thank you personally as a pastor of this church uh, for your time and your labor and the blessings you brought to our family here. And I pray that we've returned that in some way or other. And I want you to know that you're always welcome here. And uh, when you get back to where you're going, if you ever can need us or we can help you in any way, you give us a call, okay? God bless you, and you've got a nice family, and uh, we love you so much. Uh, now, Reese, where are you at, Reese? Reese, I hear you got one of them, uh, them big old harmonicas. Uh, do, the, do the whole family sing? Is this you or your wife or you sing or who sang? You sing and bring that box up with you? Somebody help with them children back there. Some of you ladies, you, you know how to handle children. I'd like to have that little one back there. Boy, that's neat. I'm sorry I've neglected you since you've been here. I, I, I'm... But remember this, the last to be first and the first to be last. You come on up here and sing and play for us or whatever you do, a couple of songs, and then we're going to have the box family come. And you're going to Papua, Papua, Papua New Guinea, Papua New Guinea, right? Yes, sir. That's one place that I've always wanted to go. I've just been, I've just been intrigued about Papua New Guinea. And... Uh, of course, I don't fly, and until they get a bus that runs over on the highway, I'll not come unless the Lord gives me a telegraph. You can let him sit in that chair there if you like. I can push it up there right for him. You want to sit in this chair, buddy? Here we go. Get out of there and sit in it. Jump up. Yeah. I'm gonna sit here. Alright. All right. 
We have one that's still waking up from a nap, and we'll try to get the rest of us cheerful anyhow. <coughs> was distressed neath Jehovah's dread frown, and lo, in the pit where my sins dragged me down, I cried to the Lord from the deep miry clay, who tenderly brought me out to golden day. He brought me out of the miry clay, he set my feet on the rock to stay. He puts a song in my soul today, a song of praise, hallelujah. He placed me upon the strong rock by his side. My steps were established, and here I'll abide. No danger of falling while here I remain, but stand by his grace until the crown I gain. He brought me out of the miry clay. He set my feet on the rock to stay. He puts a song in my soul today, a song of praise, hallelujah. I'll tell of his wonderful mercy to me. I'll praise him till all men his goodness shall see. I'll sing of salvation at home and abroad, till many shall hear the truth and trust in God. I'll tell of the pit with its gloom and despair. I'll praise the dear Father who answered my prayer. I'll sing my new song, the glad story of love, then join in the chorus with the saints above. He brought me out of the miry clay. He set my feet on the solid rock to stay. He puts a song in my soul today, a song of praise, hallelujah. That's great. Wasn't that great? How long have you been playing that uh, piano? Uh, just about 14 years. 14 years. I guess with the protruding of my stomach, I couldn't do that, could I? I'd get it all messed up in there. Uh, 
reason we started our church service is four because we got several new members uh, in our church lately, and we thank God for that. We just praise the Lord for them. They're faithful. Uh, you, you hardly ever see anyone come and join a church and go to work. But these people go to work. They come in here and they started serving. They landed in the kitchen. Some cleans the building on Sunday mornings. And, and then some writes me notes and keeps all these birthdays and all these things I'm supposed to say here down. And we want to thank God for he sent these folks our way. We really do. Uh, we really, really appreciate you. I want you to know that. And then uh, my Marine friend Jim over there that does great things for me. He wrote me that, uh, I don't think I have it with me. He wrote me that card there to me and all that. Appreciate that. But the reason we had this was to honor the box. Look at me, box. Honor you. We want to honor you and your family, plus the rest of the missionaries. But uh, Brother Bach has been, Mr. and Mrs. Bach and the children have been with us for quite a few years. And... Uh, they are now missionaries in Alaska and to the regions beyond. There's one thing that I can say about Mark Bach. He'd go to the end of the world to reach a soul. He's a soul winner. He's so conscious. He loves the Lord. And he's got a wonderful wife. Uh, they, have, they have spent their life raising their children from the good word of God not only teaching them the good word of God and expecting them to display God in their life, but they live the life of, of God in front of them. But we, we are honored to have them, that God had chosen us here for them to abide and be members of our church here. So we set this recently come at four is to honor them and to honor these other missionaries here. And we're going to let the, the Bach uh, children sing about Three songs, two or three songs, whatever Brother Bach wants them to say. We'll let him, we'll let him decide that since that's his children. I've got down here two children. If you don't let them sing it, two songs, I'll only let them sing three. That's up to you. And then I, I want him to, since you have never met the Bach family, I want him to choose at least three of the young folks, or four if he wants to, to give a short testimony of maybe your salvation or whatever you want to say. So you could, the people would get to know you and know your family, and that way we can, they can pray for you more. And then Brother Mark's going to, he has a son that's been called into mission service for the Lord. And even though we uh, preached uh, a mission message and anoint, uh, laid hands on him uh, last, uh, last service, uh, we're going to have March to give him a charge. We call it a charge. When we commission missionaries and ordained preachers, we have what we call a charge message. And Mark's going to bring a charge message to his own son. And for you who weren't here for the last meeting, we're going to give you the privilege and honor coming by and laying hands on Gregory one more time. And it wouldn't hurt us who have laid hands on him before to lay hands on him again. So... Uh, now make sure you understand what laying, laying, the word laying on hands on him is, is all about. I wouldn't want my daddy to lay hands on me, you know. He probably wouldn't understand the term. But it's the, uh, you, you, you're laying hands on him, sending him out into the mission field that God would give him power and God would bless him. And uh, that's what they'll be doing. So if with permission of Brother Mark, I'd like to ask your children to come forward to sing for us. And sing two or three songs, whichever one your dad, your mom, your dad wants you to do. Whatever you want to do, you're the boss. Since the people has, has come here to know who you are, uh, I'd like to start right there and you tell them who you are. Your first name and on and on and help the little girl to tell her and, that's, and that way they'll know your names. They won't remember it, but they'll know it. 
So start out. My name is Gregory. I'm Sarah. I'm Charity. My name is Susanna. I'm Alyssa. My name is Christiana. My name is Joseph. My name is Joel. My name is Josiah. My name is Samuel. I'm Jeremiah. My name is Mark. Amen. Now you've met the family. And Jonathan. Jonathan is part. When justice called for a payment for sin, no one worthy could be found among men, but the precious Son of God, with a cross and thorny crown, paid the death with the blood of the Lamb, paid in full by the blood. Amen. Now I am, and it reads on the page where my sins were written down, paid in full by the blood of the Lamb. Oh, how great was the debt that I owed, how to pay for the seed I had sown, but in Jesus. My Lord, a great treasure I have found. I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, paid in full by the blood of the Lamb. Free from sin, free to live, now I am. And it reads on the page where my sins were written down. Paid in full by the blood of the Lamb. And it reads on the page where my sins were written down. Paid in full by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. I was wandering in the darkness. With a load of sin, and my burdens grew heavier each day. Then I heard the Savior calling, Won't you let me in? I will take all your sins away. They're forgiven, they're forgotten, all my sins of the past. They are gone far beyond the recall. I have peace and release from my sins at last. He forgives and forgets them all. All my burdens rolled on Jesus, there on Calvary, and the price of my sins. singing and rejoicing with a heart that's free. Jesus took all my sins away. They're forgiven, they're forgotten, all my sins of the past. They are gone far beyond a recall. I have peace and release from my forgives and forgets them all. I have peace and release from my sins at last. He forgives and forgets them all. So, like I said, my name is Gregory. I'm 24 years old. Lord saved me when I was 20 years old. I just turned 20 on May 14th, 2019. Not long after that, he began to work in my heart about being a missionary. And uh, over the course of the next year, he led me to um, surrender to be, a full, uh, to be a missionary and to go to the country of Mongolia. So I praise the Lord for what he's doing in my life and look forward to what he's going to do in the future. 
Well, um, the Lord saved me in uh, April of last year, and uh, since then, he's been, you know, working in my heart and, uh, you know, making me more like him, and I thank you for that. And just recently, he's been dealing with my heart, um, talking to me about service and preaching and uh, service to him, and uh, just thank him for that. He's been, uh, you know, dealing with my heart about it, and I just... Today I came forward and uh, surrendered it, I surrendered to it. So I thank Amen. the Lord for that. Amen. Amen. My name is Mark. I'm 22 years old. The Lord saved me as a 14-year-old boy in 2015 on January 4th. That day the Lord just brought to my mind that it's not the prayer that saves you. It's really just the Lord Jesus that can save you. And I think I'd been, I know I had been trusting my prayer to get me to heaven. But that was the realization the Lord showed me that day. And the Lord called me to uh, go as a missionary to Andorra, which is a small landlocked country between France and Spain. That was about a year or so after I was saved. So I'm preparing for that. I'm excited to serve the Lord. Um, as, again, I'm Josiah, and I'm 13 years old. As of last year, um, the Lord began dealing with my heart about salvation. And uh, I knew I just wasn't saved and through my dad and some other preachers. The Lord uh, gave, um, let conviction fall in my life, and I got saved on April 14th at about 1240. And um, after then, the Lord began dealing with my heart about becoming a missionary. And I was praying about where, Lord, and the um, Lord directed my life to the country of Brazil. And after that, um, actually today, I surrendered my life and dedicated my life full-time service. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. That's right. I thank the Lord for, for saving me, for the upbringing that he gave me in, in, in this family and uh, our church and just the, the blessing that the Lord has, has given me. I don't deserve his goodness and none of us do, but it's, it's certainly a blessing to be uh, uh, a, a sheep in the Lord's pasture. And so appreciate uh, the church here and, and y'all's prayers and, and support for us over the years. Uh, appreciate your prayers over the, the last couple weeks as we got to go on that trip and just uh, saw the Lord open doors. And uh, someone asked us, did you have it all planned out about where you're going and where you're going to stay? And the answer is no. Sometimes we got to an island and we weren't sure where we were going to stay or exactly why we were there. But we saw the Lord open doors and just and work it all out. So that was exciting to see. We appreciate y'all. Appreciate my wife and our kids and just the Lord's goodness. So I'm going to sing this song. Hope it's a blessing. God and God alone created all these things we call our own. From the mighty to the small, the glory in them all. It's God's and God's alone. God and God alone reveals the truth of all we call unknown. And all the best and worst of man won't change the master's plan of God. And God alone, God and God alone is fit to take the universe's throne. Let everything that lives reserve its truest praise for God. shall never tire of God and God alone. God and God alone is fed to take the universe.
Jesus' is throne. Let everything that lives reserve its truest praise for God and God alone. Amen. Amen. You ever seen a family so talented? And they said, uh, God is equal with us. You know, we all created equal. Well, I'm missing some of that stuff, aren't you? Well, what a blessing, what a blessing. Gregory, won't you come up here and sit while your daddy brings the charge, if it's all right with your daddy, and then we'll put you down front there, have them people come by and lay hands on you when your father gets through. Brother Mark, you come and preach until you get through. Then we'll Amen. Hands on your <clears throat> yes, sir. <clears throat> well, preacher, we sure appreciate the uh, the church being here to stand with us, and behind us, and for us. Because if you don't have that uh, good church behind you, uh, you know, really, it's you're all alone. You're all alone. But Jesus said, "I will go with you to the end of the world." And uh, last year we went to Papua New Guinea. And we got an aircraft. And, you know, I prayed there, and I found the Lord is with me there. And I sensed his presence and his help and his strength there, just like, you know, when I'm here. And uh, I praise the Lord for that. He said, I'll go with you to the end of the world. And so um, today we're going to look at a very important subject, and that's a commissioning service. And uh, if you will, take your Bible and turn to Matthew 28. <clears throat> Matthew 28. <clears throat> How many of y'all ever have problems with your memory? A little bit. You have little problems with your memory? Okay. <clears throat> well, if you aren't, trust me, you will. Amen. There was a, a three sisters, and one of them, she uh, was up in bed, and she got wrapped up in her blankets. And she called her other sister downstairs and said, Margaret, Margaret, I need help. And then she sat there and she thought, now wait a minute, was I getting in the bed or was I getting out of the bed? And Margaret, she took off up the stairs and she was on her way up and I know somebody needs help, but was it upstairs or downstairs? And she called for her other sister. And her other sister, she called her and said, Tommy Joe, I need some help. And she said, okay, I don't want to forget. So she knocked on wood. And then she thought, well, I'll be there right after I answer the door. And so uh, we don't want to forget things, do we? <clears throat> Matthew 28, we find the Great Commission. The Great Commission. Now, Greg... The preacher said that I'm in charge while I'm up here, all right? Would you go get me my water, son? Okay. In Matthew 28, <clears throat> thank you, a little bit dry. <clears throat> and uh, before we look at that, I just want to look at one verse here. This verse has been on my heart. <clears throat> In Malachi chapter 4, verse 6. Malachi 4, verse 6. <clears throat> it talks about that prophet Elijah. And it says, He shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. And the heart of the children to their fathers. Now I want you to look, if this doesn't happen, if we don't have the hearts of our children and a divorce takes place, I'm saying between children and fathers and between fathers and children, if that divorce takes place, God said, lest I smite the earth with, what's the next word? A curse. A curse. In other words, if we can't close that gap, it's gone. 
That's it. It's over. What's over? We lost. There, when that gap occurs, you've lost a generation. And when you lose that generation, you can't ever get it back. Amen. You can't ever get it back. It's over. It's closing time. Amen. So I encourage you fathers, keep the heart of your children. Amen. And I encourage you young people, don't lose heart for your fathers and your parents. Amen. That, that's just, that's extra, amen. That's extra. But here we're going to look at the Great Commission. Matthew chapter 28, verse 16. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee and into the mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. And notice, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you all, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you for your word. I pray that you bless it and help us, Lord, as we look into it in Jesus' name. And we give you the glory for all that's done. In your name I pray. Amen. And so what we're looking at is the Great Commission in the Bible. And we learn of a commissioning service in the Bible. And so what is the Great Commission? That's the question. It is Christ's transferal of his authority to go and preach the gospel to the world. Amen. And so what is the Great Commission? Raise your hand if you know. Anybody know? All right. Let's see. What is it, brother? Amen. And so, and to deal with all the problems that creates. You know, it's not easy to do the Great Commission sometimes. Amen. But this is what the Lord calls us to do. And so, it is Christ's transferal of authority to go and preach the gospel to the world. That's the Great Commission. It's a commission. It's a commission to do that. And so we were just in Nassau, Bahamas with Pastor Adams. And he said, rather than letting the world trouble you, you trouble them. So whenever he goes in a room, he says, bless the Lord. He'll go in and bless the Lord, brother. Bless the Lord. How you doing? Praising the Lord. Praising the Lord. That's Pastor Adam. He said, rather than let them trouble you, it's like you walk in, who's that? What are they doing? Oh, I bet that's a preacher or whatever. You know, people are sometimes hard on preachers. But he just says, hey, reverse it. Amen. You go in and pastor them. Amen. Amen. Just go tell them the gospel. And so this is part of the Great Commission, telling people about the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, it's great. That's the first point, Greg. It is great. It's a big job to go out and tell people around the whole world. And it's broad. We find in Matthew, it's an age-old commission. It's been around a long time. So Jesus gave the great commission. And the last thing Jesus said should be the first concern of his church. It's the great commission. And so we find this commission had a place. Now look at verse 16. The eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And so this is a place where it started, the Great Commission, in Galilee. And it was from the Lord, so it had a place. And so it was the Great Commission given by, given by a person. And that person is the Lord Jesus Christ, verse 17. And it says, when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And so it was given by the Lord. And it's not only from a place, from a person, but that person has power. And it's about his authority, his power to what? Tell us what to do. 
So Jesus is the one who tells us what to do. And we find in verse 18, Jesus established that he has authority by the resurrection and he proves that and he gives the great commission. He spake unto them saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Amen. Amen. And so we find the great commission has power and there are people that are involved in this first time that it was given. He said, go ye therefore and teach all nations. And we find it was the 11, in verse 16, disciples. That's who he gave it to originally. Amen. And so then we find there to have a priority. And what is that priority? To teach all nations. And so that's what he told them to do. And there's a practice that's to be taken and, and carried out. And that is, notice, to teach all nations, baptizing them. Now, how many folks here have been baptized? How many are baptized more than once? Raise your hand. All right, look at all these folks. How many? All right. And so, that's why we're Baptists, amen. I was baptized twice. And so, uh, as a Catholic, I was baptized, but that one didn't take, didn't work. And then we find... It has a practice, and there are particulars involved. And so we find that in verse 20. Teaching them to observe all things, notice, whatsoever I have commanded you. And so that's the particulars. It's what Jesus said to do. Amen. And then, notice, it has a promise. And what is that promise? Do you know? What did he say he'd do? He'd go with us. Now how far? Who knows how far? Even unto the end of the world. So this is the Great Commission. This is what we're supposed to do. This is what Jesus said to do. And so it's entrusted to the local New Testament church. This is a, something that he entrusted the local New Testament church. And so this trust is to convey the gospel and administer the ordinances of the church. Now, do you know what the ordinances are? Amen. This is what God ordered. And what is it? Baptism and the Lord's Supper. Amen. And he said to do this and continue this, those two things, until the end of the world. And so this is what we're supposed to do. Now, we just got back from the Bahamas. We went into a town off of Spanish, Spanish Wells, Bahamas. And we met a 16-year-old boy named Leroy. And Leroy, he was of African descent. And Paul and I were talking to Leroy. And I said, Leroy, do you ever think about the Lord? And he looked and he said, I've been thinking about that a lot. I thought, my, 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 here's one that's ready to get saved. And we shared the gospel, and Leroy got saved. Amen. And I said, Leroy? And I was thinking, he doesn't really have a good church around here. And I thought, well, Leroy, you want to get baptized? He said, uh, ah, baptized? I said, yeah, well, I'll take you right down to the ocean. We'll baptize you. He's like, well, uh, it's cold. I said, yeah, I know it's cold. But it's up to you. I mean, that's what God said to do. If you get saved, you should get baptized. He said, well, yeah. So he jumped on his bike and he took off. And we went all the way down to the ocean there. And Paul and I followed him on his bicycle. And uh, we went down. I walked out in the water. I, didn't, I wasn't really ready, but I had one good pair of pants. But we washed them in the sink later. But I baptized him. And uh, that's part of the Great Commission. That's part of the Great Commission. And so God saved a number of Bahamians uh, just in three trips, I think close to 50 people. And uh, that's not because of us. That's because of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. See, people respond in some places, and that's more than I've probably seen saved in my life anyway. <laughs> but over there, it's, it's different, you know. 
And the same thing with Papua New Guinea. We went there, and you can go out there, and the missionary that we met, he just walked out, and all these Bahamians gathered together. And they're listening while he's speaking. They're just listening. And uh, I thought, man, that's something. Uh, these, these folks are ready. The fields are ripe. The opportunities are great. And so there's places in the world. And, uh, of course, Gregory, he's heading to Mongolia. And I'm sure over there. Uh, you see, the difference is whether they've had it already. Whether they've had the opportunity already. Some people haven't had the opportunity. And so it's entrusted to the local church. Now we know, if we're not careful, the Great Commission becomes the Great Omission. We don't do it. We don't tell people. We think, well, they're too hard. They're not going to listen. Well, they've uh, already heard it and they've had their chance. But listen, folks, I know people don't deserve to hear it twice when some have not heard it once. But there are some. How many of you heard it more than once before you got saved? Look it around. Amen. You see? And so there's still people around here. There's people that need to hear. Uh, yesterday we were at uh, Whataburger. And we got some, you know, a good deal on hamburgers. You had 10 for 10 bucks. And uh, we, uh, man, that's almost enough to feed the whole family, isn't it? But only three of us ate them, didn't we? And so we were there, and uh, there was a girl behind the counter. And we, I had one track, and it said, Eternal life is a gift. And I said, here, have you, do you know about that? She looked at me. Now, this is in the Bible Belt. She said, no, I don't know Amen. about that. I don't know about that. So I told one of my children, I said, go back in there and give her another one. I didn't want to take her time at work. I said, go give her another track, something to make it clear. But that touched my heart. Amen. I don't know about that. She didn't know. She didn't know. And we cannot assume that people know. Amen. We can't assume that. And so it's personal to take the gospel. And so today we're recognizing Gregory has a call. And with the call... There are gifts to fulfill that call. And it's for God's people, the Great Commission. You see, the, uh, the world's not going to carry out the Great Commission. They're not going to publish books and try to tell people how to be saved. You go into the local libraries and you go find books. And so here's a child, they're not raised in a Christian home. They may be in Oliver Springs. Their parents don't believe in church. They don't take them to church. All they know people that go. They've never heard a Sunday school lesson. They've never heard a, a sermon. And, and they just live in the peripheral somewhere. And so they don't know that. And they're looking for truth. And they go into the public library and they go through and they see Mary Poppins. And they see Bugs Bunny. And they see the Roadrunner. And they see all these different things. And... Uh, Cows eating, you know, yellow grass and all these different things. And they, they see all these different things and then they go to the science department. And they see, well, in the beginning, there was a big bang. And the big bang created some kind of cosmic jello. And that cosmic jello all of a sudden developed some tadpoles. And those tadpoles grew up to be monkeys. And the monkeys became men. And he put on his hat and he became a university professor. Amen. I think, well, I don't know if I want to be like that. Amen. And so they go to the science department. And they go to every department in astronomy and linguistics. And everything is based on this evolutionary idea and this progressive thought that leads to know God. And they're looking for truth. And the Bible, well... It's not allowed or it's way over in the corner. So he has 50,000 books. And if he picks the one, he hits the jackpot. Or you can go and say, hey, young man, do you know about the Lord Jesus? And he can hit that jackpot instantly. Amen. And you can tell him 
about the greatest treasure that's greater than any lottery or anything that he could possibly win. And so this is the Great Commission. And it's for God's people. Jesus said, you have not chosen me, but I've chosen you and ordained you. Now, what's that word ordained mean? You know what that word means? That means gifted. God has gifted his people. I enjoyed all the specials, but I especially enjoyed Brother Brother, uh, Reese's special and his family. Because I thought, man, how can that man, that boy, young man, get that voice so low? I was like, wow. And, and his wife, it's like, these are two tuning forks. I mean, they just hitting every note. Amen. And that's a gift. And that gift is given by God. And that's to carry out the Great Commission. And guess what? If you avail yourself, you might find your voice is like a tuning fork too. But you're never going to know until you surrender and be a blessing to others. And so the Great Commission is for God's people and uh, that you should go and bring forth fruit. And so this is a great opportunity. Now, do you like picking corn or apples or tomatoes or some kind of fruit or vegetable out of the garden. You like doing that? Amen. Isn't it nice to go out there and just pick those vegetables and uh, sit down, you know, and eat a tomato, bring some salt to the garden and just, you know, all by yourself, just eat that tomato and thank God for that, that great tomato. And, you know, that's, that's fruit picking. And we all like to do that. Well, the Bible says that you should go and bring forth fruit. And so that fruit should remain. And then we find it requires diligence. And God does not want us to be lazy about his commission. He doesn't want us to be lazy. And so the fireman goes and he sits down at the big fire. And he's got his fire hose there and he's watching it burn. And he says, I believe God is sovereign. He's going to put out that fire for us. I just believe You don't believe he will? I can't believe. You can't believe that God is that sovereign to put out that fire. I have faith, you know. And so you'd say, Mr. Fireman, God will put out the fire if you'll point the fire hose. And so that's responsible action that's required from the Great Commission. It requires diligence. It requires maturity. Amen. We have to grow in grace. And that maturity is a requirement. And so we need to be found faithful. And I I believe that uh, Gregory is is grown in grace and in the knowledge and that he's ready. If I personally didn't believe it and the preacher didn't believe it, uh, he wouldn't go. The preacher did a a survey. He sat down. he, He checked him out. And uh, I believe he's ready. And so we believe that you're ready to go and represent the Lord and do the work of missionary in obedience to Christ's command. And so this great commission has a charge. Now turn to 1 Timothy chapter 1. And we're going to look at the charge that Paul gave Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter number 1. <clears throat> and so, first of all, he told him to stay true to the book. To stay true to the book. Gregory, you need to stay true to the book. The old King James Bible. Amen. The old King James Bible. Amen. And so, we need to stay true to the book. Don't change Bibles. Just stay with the good old King James. And so Paul charged Timothy by God's authority to charge some that they teach no other doctrine. In verse number three. And then to give the truth. To give the truth. Brother Scalise, when he goes and visits, he says, I have truth. Uh, Do you want truth? I've got truth. 
Hey, do you want truth? And so people need the truth. People need the truth. Well, what is truth? Jesus said, I'm the truth. Jesus is the truth. And so people need the truth. And so we find to stay with the truth. He said, neither give heed to fables. Now, you say, Brother Bach, he doesn't let their their kids uh, watch cartoons. No. You know what I let them have? Truth. I watch cartoons. I used to laugh at all of them. But where has Hollywood wound up? Right at the, where, where's Hollywood? Right at the feet of, I guess, the descendants of Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. And so, um, we don't do all that stuff. You say, why not? Because, hey, there's, you know how many different books that people have to choose from? Man, I give them biographies. I give them autobiographies. I give them things that reinforce their faith. They've only got so much time. I've only got so much time to get that truth into them. And so the Bible says in the last days they're going to turn their ears away from the truth. I thought, and turn to fables. So I said, I mean, this is called progressive sanctification. So if you haven't chosen this yet, or you're not going to, that's between you and God. But as for me, uh, we chose, a while back, we used to do all the cartoons. We used to do all these things. I used to do a lot of things that I don't do anymore. Because we should be more dedicated, more separated. As you get closer to heaven, you got to eliminate things that aren't going to be there. you got to get rid of all those things that that aren't going to be in heaven. And if you... So if that biography will pass and get into heaven, that's what we want in our house. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, if, if, it, if the Lord's going to let it in heaven, so the first cuss word's in it, mm-mm, that's not going to make it. And so we got all kinds of books, and all the, you know, uh, if, it's a, if it's an encyclopedia, you get to those bad parts, I said scratch them out. Bad pictures, hey, rip them out, kids. Rip them out, get rid of those. Say, you, you judge the encyclopedia? No, God judges it. I just, I just... Get rid of all that sin in there. And so, uh, the Great Commission. We need to straight, stay true to the book and give the truth. And we need to live clean and moral. Amen. Live clean and moral. Paul told Timothy, neither give heed to fables and to have charity out of a pure heart. You know, if you go to the four soils, the good soil, that's a good heart. That's going to have some good fruit. And so we need to live morally clean, and it says, and of a good conscience. Amen. And so how do you keep a clean conscience in a dirty world? Well, you got to pray every day and confess sin. Amen. Amen. And keep... is close to Jesus as you can. And so no hypocrisy or pretending. That's what Paul told Timothy. Listen, we're not allowed hypocrisy. Okay? And so no pretending. He talked about faith unfeigned. It's like, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing better than great. Amen. Uh, Tell me about what's going on. Oh, it's just wonderful. Everything's going good. Praise the Lord. And deep inside, it's like, well, but, you know, this is troubling me or that's troubling me. No. God says, faith unfeigned. So that's without pretending. No hypocrisy. Stay on track. This is Paul's charge to Timothy. Some, having swerved, turned aside to vain Jangling. Now, what is vain jangling? Have you ever seen one of these puppets on a string? I guess that's as close as I can give you to the definition of vain jangling. Okay? And so that's not staying with the book. That's not staying true. That's not living clean. That's not staying with the Word of God. And then we find staying on track. 
It says, some having swerved. Amen. Now, I've got, I, we got a truck. We're selling our van. Anybody want to buy a van? Got a good deal. We're selling our van, and uh, we're trying to pay off our truck. Amen. And that truck, it's got something that I've never had before. I didn't know it had it when I, when I got it. It's got automatic steering. Okay? So you can take your hands off. And it just steers and uh, as long as there are lines in the road, okay? If there's no line, it doesn't know to turn, okay? So you're going down the road, and you, you spill your coffee or something, and it'll correct your course if there's a line there. Amen. So you've got to choose where you spill your coffee and stay on the road. But God says, no turning aside. And then... This charge is to interpret rightly the word. He talks about some are teachers of the law. And he said the law is good if a man use it lawfully. And so this is interpret rightly the word. And the law is not made for a righteous man. And so we got to rightly interpret that. And teach people they're sinners. Amen. It says... It talks about whoremongers and those that defile themselves with mankind, men stealers and, and uh, liars and perjured persons. And if there be any other thing contrary to sound doctrine. And so you, we got to show people they're a sinner and they need salvation. And so this is part of Paul's charge. And uh, show them the gospel. Amen. Amen. It, listen. There's a basic, basic concepts that people need to be saved. Number one, you're a sinner. I'm a sinner. Universally, the whole world's in sin. Number two, sin has a penalty. That penalty is death. That death penalty is beyond the grave. That death penalty can carry the second death. And that second death will put us in hell forever, burning in the fire and brimstone, and that's the second death. And that not only is that we're sinners, and uh, there's a penalty for sin, and it's death, but there's a free gift available for those that will receive it, and it's through the Lord Jesus Christ. He paid our sin penalty for us. Amen. He gave His life to keep us out of that lake of fire. And so we can receive that free gift by faith. And so we teach them that. And so we give them the gospel. And if we receive that gift by faith and we're willing to turn from our sin and our selfishness and turn from our independence from Him to a dependence on Him, He gives us this life and we're saved forever. Amen. We're saved forever. Amen. And, and it can't be taken away if we really trust Him. And so this is part of the charge. And then realize what a privilege, what a privilege it is to be a preacher. Amen. And so he said, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. And so this glorious gospel, this is what we get to do. We get to tell people about Jesus. We get to tell them how to get to heaven. Do you know a doctor without Christ he can heal their body, but he can't help them with their soul. Amen. But we can help them not just to get physical life, but to have eternal life. And this is an important job, and it's a privilege entrusted. And then we know this is a God-given privilege. And so verse 12, I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. And so this is what God does. Now, I can commend Gregory. He was saved a little later than, than a lot of our young people. He was saved at 20 years old. You heard his testimony. He hit a telephone pole with his brother's car. He got his shoe stuck under the brake, and he couldn't keep from giving it all the gas, and it ran right into that pole and smashed that Toyota wheel all the way into the passenger seat, and he, would, he really messed up that vehicle. And I sat down and I said, Gregory, I don't think you're saved, son. 
are you saved? Well, he stuttered and stumbled with it. I said, son, I don't think you're really saved. I don't see the fruit. Now you know. Are you saved? And he finally said, no, I'm not saved. I said, son, would you like to get saved? He got saved. And the next day, that's when he was 20. He's now 24. But the next day, God said, you're going to be a missionary. And so that day he met someone. He had some doubt. And this person said, hey, let me tell you what happened to me. When I got saved, he said, the same day, God called me to be a missionary. Was it the same day or the next day? Same day. The same day. So God called Gregory. And so for four years, we've worked very closely together. And Gregory tries very hard, very hard to uh, please his parents. That speaks a lot to me. That speaks a whole lot. And he's been faithful and he's a soul winner and he's serving the Lord and he's excited about going to Mongolia. And uh, I didn't tell him to go to Mongolia. The Lord called him. That's a long way from home. We're going to miss him. We love him. And so we know this is a God-given privilege. And then we see Paul's testimony in verse 13. Notice, who was before a blasphemer, persecutor, injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. And so here's Paul's testimony about salvation. And we see that he gives his past and his grace that he received and his humility and his pattern in verse 16. He said that I obtained mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. And then it brings God glory and Paul gives God the glory. That's what he does before Timothy. He gives the charge and he gives God the glory. He said now unto the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. And so this is Paul's testimony and uh, Paul's charge in verse 18. This charge, he said, this charge. And so what is the charge? He said, I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. And so Paul said, you're going to war, son. You're going to war. You're, the devil is going to declare war on you. When you got saved, guess what? The devil declared war on you. And he said, war a good warfare. He didn't say, um, sleep in a nice soft cot. Amen. He said, war a good warfare. And so sometimes, now I'm not saying it's, you, you don't get a chance to, to rest. Amen. If we don't rest, why, well, we're not going to be able to war anything. But there's a time to fight. The good fight. And, you know, uh, Mr. Whittington had uh, somebody try to attack him with a knife. You know, Brother Buddy. And, and it was at a Walmart near where he lived. And Mrs. Whittington said, you ain't doing that to my son or my, my husband. And she ran up and grabbed this person and twisted the collar of his shirt. And he's like, let go, let go. Now, she's pretty big. I'll tell you what, she's not young. But she, she got that boy. He finally gave up and he took off. See, she was warring a good warfare. Listen, if she can do that, some of us young people, I said us young people, see, I still feel young. We can go and, and preach the gospel. Listen, uh, Samuel, I almost beat him in a, in a race the other day, didn't I, Samuel? I was just ahead of him. Now, I was pushing him behind as I was running. Trying to... <laughs> but I still get out there. And uh, listen, as long as we got teeth to bite, 
Billy Sunday said he'll bite him and call the devil and he'll fight the devil and he'll work it and he's going to go forward and, and do what God called him to do. Listen, as long as you've got fight in you, you need to fight. And Greg, you need to fight the good fight. Because, and lay hold on eternal life. Whereinto thou art called. And so, Timothy's responsibility, he said, holding faith in a good conscience. And stay away from bad company. Stay away from bad company. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Now, when my kids were young, some of them, there was boys that wanted to, hey, could, could your kids come over and play? I said, no way, boys. I don't like them. You say, dad puts it in you, God will put it in dad, whether it's a good or a bad relationship. That's what God does. He puts it in there. You know, my mom had a lie detector inside of her. Boy, she could tell. You're telling the truth, you see. And you'd say, oh, mom, I want to go down here, and you're planning on going over there. She knew it. Well, we need to realize that God puts that in us, and we need to stay away from bad company. And God puts it in parents. It's like, that, that person's no good. You ever said that? That person's no good. I know. You know, that same person, I, he wanted the kids to come over and watch movies. I said, I don't want you watching movies. I, we, we got rid of that television. Amen. Now, if you have one, that's between you and the Lord. But I've got a bunch of children to raise. You understand? And you know what kids do when they got that television? Let me tell you what they do. They turn it on. Amen. That's deep, isn't it? And then they watch it. And guess what? It's going in there. Amen. Now look, I've got enough problems without a television to add the television on top of everything and give them ideas. The devil puts ideas. You can take away all the television. You can put them you know, in a box and put a wiener in a keyhole. They're going to find something to get into. Amen. Amen. And so uh, we took Daniel one time, and I said, Daniel, we're going to send you to the mission field. And we wrapped him up. I said, we got to send you in the mail. And he's just a little guy. And so we wrapped him up in a blanket, and I gave him some wieners. And I said, and it, this happened right back here. He was just about, I don't know, six, seven years old. And I said, now, Daniel, you ready to go? We're going to send you away. We're going, now, this is a sanctified uh, half-truth, okay? And so we got him, and we wrapped him up into a blanket, and we gave him some wieners, and we put him in the dumpster. And so we just left him there for a little while. I wanted to see if he was willing. And you know what? He just sat there and he's ready to go. He's going to listen to his dad. He's going to let the mailman send him away. And he thought he was in a big mailbox, see? And then we finally said, hey, Daniel. Hey, Daniel. Daniel, get out of the blanket. You're okay, son. We're, you're in the dumpster, son. It's fine. And so, but you can take away everything for a child but they've still got the devil and they've still got a sin nature and they need Jesus in there. They need to get Jesus in there. He's the only one that's going to really help them. And, uh, and you can take somebody and you can put Jesus in there and he can charge hell and go right through Sodom and Gomorrah and keep a clean heart. It just depends on what they want. Amen. Amen. And so Paul charged him War, a good warfare, holding faith in a good conscience, and stay away from bad company. He said, Hermeneus and Alexander. These were bad guys. I told these, Paul when he was little, don't go with this. You know what that boy is now? That boy, I said, don't get it with him. I don't even want to tell you. He's involved in Hollywood. I'm not going to tell you what he's doing because I don't want the kids to hear it. But that was bad company. And I'm glad that I made that decision. And so, we're coming to a close. As your father, I want to give you a charge. You know, you're my son in the faith. I want you to the Lord. And uh, you're a member of community. And I want you to be faithful to, to the home church here. And be a good testimony. Be a good testimony, son. Live a separated life. 
Um, maintain your devotions. Just, you know your dad's done that. And, and teach your children the Word of God if God gives you a family. And uh, give God the glory. Give Him the glory. And be a soul winner. Be, just tell people about Jesus. Share your faith. Don't be greedy. Don't be greedy. God's, he'll take care of you. He'll do exceedingly abundantly above all you ask or think. You just keep Him first. And preach the Word faithfully. Preach the Word, son. Stand against apostasy. The whole world is heading headlong into hell. Amen, and so stand against apostasy. And try to know and understand prophecy. We find that where he told him about these prophecies. And, and Jesus, the main one is Jesus is coming again. Amen. And we should look for that. And make much of the local assembly and uh, love uh, those that God puts in your path and serve the uh, home church and the body of Christ faithfully. And don't limit your family, Greg. Don't be afraid. Just don't, don't be afraid. Don't live it. And then watch out for idolatry and immorality. And lead your family and teach uh, others this as well. It says, the things that thou hast received, commit to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. And disciple those in your responsibility. Disciple. Disciple. Spend the time and step out by faith and look for the blessed hope daily, and pray privately and with others corporately, and uh, realize God does the sending. He's the one that's sending you, Greg. We find, and he uses his people, but he ultimately is the one. And we find that in the book of Acts. And the preacher, he mentioned this on Wednesday. So if we will, we're going to turn here and... uh, I'm not going to promise. I hear preachers say, oh, this is the last place and I promise. And sometimes they, they don't, they forget their promise. But here, we're, we're trying to come to a close here. Acts chapter 13. <clears throat> and uh, look at verse, these early verses of Acts. <clears throat> Acts 13. Notice verse 2. It talks about verse 1. There were in the church that was in Antioch. So this is a local New Testament church. This is the authority isn't for everybody to, to do a sending service. It's a local New Testament church. It has a locality. And so the preacher said that I, that I get to do this Preacher, it's my preference. It's just those in this local assembly Amen. because that's scriptural. Amen. And so, these, and, and, and I want to look at those that really qualify for this. Number one, it says, there were certain in the church that was at Antioch, certain prophets, teachers, and so these are leaders. And then notice Barnabas and Simeon, that was of Niger and Lucius, the Cyrene and Menean and that had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul as they ministered to the Lord and fasted. So these were dedicated men. It wasn't just anybody. They were dedicated men. And so this was a very, uh, very, very important thing that was going on. They fasted and they prayed. And then we see they laid hands on them. And so... Uh, here's Barnabas and Saul, and they're ready to go out of that local New Testament church. And then we see how God sent them in verse 3. It says, when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. And so they being sent by what? The the church? Doesn't say that. It says, by the Holy Ghost. And so departed unto Seleucia, And from thence they sailed to Cyprus. And so this is the pattern that we should follow. And this would be my request, preacher, if it could be just our home church, if that's okay with you. And so, and of course, the preacher, very important to have your pastor. 
And, and that's very important. And so they sent him away. And so this is the pattern we should follow. And uh, this is what, uh, what we, we really need to do with Gregory. And I'm not discounting what's already been done. But I'm trying to get it as close to this pattern for, for, for Gregory and uh, with the pastor's permission for this evening. And so those that are members, those that are mature, those that aren't just starting out preachers, but haven't been commissioned, don't, or those that are, uh, if they're, they're teachers in the church and the pastor's t trusted them for a position of teaching, and in this local New Testament church, right here, just like Antioch, and, and to come and pray for Gregory as he kneels down over here. Gregory, if you would, come over and kneel down. And we'll all put our hand on you together. And I'm going to ask the pastor to pray and, and those that feel led. And uh, so if you will, come right down here. And I'm going to ask the pastor to come. And uh, these other men. I'm going to ask Brother Petty if you would come. I'm going to ask Brother... Um, Gibbs, if you would come, and uh, I'm going to ask Paul and uh, Jonathan, since they're already sent out of this church, and uh, <clears throat> Brother Daniel, he's called to be an evangelist, and you other men that feel that you're ready. Now, I don't know everybody, the pastor does, that, that you have a place, or you've taught, and you're qualified before God, uh, we want you to participate. And so, Greg, if you would get on your knees <clears throat> and ask Pastor to put your hand on, on Gregory Pastor, <clears throat> and you, if you would pray first for him, okay? Our uh, Heavenly Father, what an honor and privilege it is put to participate in such holy and sacred thing. Yes. Lord, as we send this man commissioned to a foreign land to preach the gospel of Christ. We thank you, Lord, for calling him. We ask, Lord, that you'd bless him. We've asked you to put your protection around him. Yeah. And, Lord, yes. what a privilege it is that you've chose our little congregation uh, to make this the ninth family that you've sent out of our church to a foreign land. God bless him. Yeah. And, Lord, I pray that he'll always look to you for his supply and his needs. And Lord, thank you for your good mercy and your good grace. Thank you for his mom and dad who have raised him up in the things and ways of the Lord. And I pray, Father, you'd use it mightily that souls will be saved and lives will be changed. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Brother Petty, would you pray for us? Father, again, we sure thank you for your goodness. We thank you, God, that you're faithful. Amen. And Lord, we thank you for this young man who has a touch of God on his life. We ask you, Lord, that you'd use him mightily. Amen. Father, please, I pray, you just use him and use him and use him till Jesus comes. Yeah. We'll thank you for it. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Larry. Our Father, we do ask you, as Gregory launches out on this ministry, you just guide, him, guide every step and protect him and provide all that he needs and from day to day. We pray, Lord, you give him peace in his heart as he makes decisions. We pray you give him direction with advice from from others, from the church, and from his dad and others um, on decisions that he makes. And, and Lord, we just ask you to give him joy and uh, peace in his heart as he goes forth. And we pray that when the times get difficult, you'll be there with him and that you'll guide him through everything. In Christ's name we pray, amen. amen. Father, we're thankful for this time. Lord, we're thankful for Gregory. Lord, his testimony thus far. Amen. Lord, we're thankful for his calling, Lord, and we're thankful that not only you've saved Gregory, but you've called Gregory, but uh, you've also given us a pattern in the Bible that Gregory can follow, Lord. Pray that you'd uh, help him. Lord, I pray that you'd prepare his ministry even now, Lord, his, his mission field, prepare him. Lord, I pray that you'd protect him, Lord, from, uh, from the, uh, the things that yeah. uh, they are going to try to sway him, Lord, they are going to try to, uh, the temptations that are out there, Lord, I pray that you'd Keep that hedge of protection around him, Lord. I pray that you protect his ministry. And, Lord, I pray that you'd uh, help Gregory take this charge that has been helpful to all of us, Lord. I yeah. pray that you'd uh, have him hold that close to his heart, Lord, and help him remember those things that he's been taught. 
Lord, I thank you for Gregory and everything that you've done in his life. Lord, I pray that you'd be with him as he goes on his ministry, Lord, now. We ask these things in your name. Amen. 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 Our Father, we thank you for this occasion, Lord. I thank you for Gregory and the blessing he's been to me personally. Lord, I thank you for our family and upbringing and what we were taught from very young to love you, to love your word. Lord, I thank you that that has carried through in the life of Gregory and his, his calling, Lord. And I pray that you would bless him abundantly. Lord, I pray that, that wherever the path may lead, Lord, that he would go with the feeling of the Spirit and the power of the Word. And Lord, I just pray that you would bless him abundantly. And thank you, Lord, that he's a part of our church family. And Lord, I pray you'd help us to be the blessing to him that we should be. And Lord, we, we pray that as we take part in this commissioning service, Lord. Thank you for that opportunity, and I pray you'd bless him, and uh, thank you once again, in Jesus' name. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day, this opportunity, and Lord, I thank you for Greg and the blessing he's been to me, to us, Lord, as a brother, but uh, Lord, at this time, we just agreeing together, pray that you'd put your hand on him. I know that it is. Amen. We uh, pray that you would give him the power, yes. the strength to do what you've called him to do. Lord, that you'd give him uh, boldness and uh, faithfulness, Lord, and just give him fruit for his labor. Amen. And guide and direct his steps. And uh, keep him from the evil one, Lord, but allow him to, uh, by your grace, carry your gospel forth and that uh, souls would be saved. Lord, we pray that you'd bless him and be with him and uh, help us to... Stand behind him Amen. as we ought, and we'll thank you in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Our Father, we do commend Gregory to you. Lord, I pray that you would just be with him, that you would help him through the hard times, that you'd help him through the, the uh, times of discouragement and loneliness, and uh, that you would be with him in a powerful way. Lord, that you'd give him the right help me yes. to go Amen. with him on the field. Amen. Father, that you'd uh, fill him up with your joy and spirit and that you would enable him, Lord, with the whatever his needs are, that you would help him discover the gifts that you've given him and utilize them to the full capacity. And Lord, that he'd find happiness serving you and that you'd make him fruitful, Lord. And we just commend him to you, Lord. We thank you that you've allowed us to participate in this uh, time. And Lord, that uh, his fruits can be part of uh, our home church and uh, the labors of each person participating and those that are uh, members here and attend here. And Lord, we thank you for him and we pray, we commit him to you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Preacher, can we sing a song at the end? Yeah. yeah. All right. Ball. Come on. Come on, guys. Come on. Let's all of you. Come on. <clears throat> Come on, John. Uh, <clears throat> Paul, you're, you and your family, if they want to come. All right. Because that glory. Amen. All right, and you guys that don't know it, just... Pantomime, isn't that what they do? All right, go ahead.
I think we all have been commissioned, don't you? You know, I'm just thinking, thinking, thinking. I'm running, learning English. It's not as hard to get about a track as you think it is. The devil just convinces you it is. Get beyond that. Get beyond that. One little track can make a difference between somebody's eternity. And then ask them, do they, do they go to church? And then invite them to our church, or Mount Pisgah, or some church. We, this is our mission field. God has commissioned us, each of us here. And just by being saved, we're commissioned to carry out the Great Commission. And this is our mission field right here. Right here. We can't expect them to give up their life and go around the world. And we set at ease in Zion. Oh, well, but wait a minute. We're taking our hard-earned money and supporting them. Well, let's take our hard-earned money and support you, and you go around the world. Outside those doors, there are millions and thousands of people just in our area here that really doesn't know how to be saved. They really don't even know that they need to be saved. They don't even know they need to be saved. I didn't know I needed to be saved. I didn't know I needed to be forgiven. I didn't even know what Jesus died on the cross for. And somebody drove 700 miles in a snowstorm just to tell me. I thank God for that man. I laid down my life for that man. Get you some tracks, put them in your pocket, and just do it. Just do it. Just, just do it. Do you know for sure if you died today, you'd go to heaven? Would you take this track and read it? I want you to go to heaven with me. I'd like to invite you to go to church with me. We talked about it. We talked to everybody about everything. But we do not talk to people about the most important thing, and that's their soul. That's their soul. And I'm not saying it's easy to go up to a person and just open up a conversation. I don't have any problem with it, but I, I, that's, that, that's the way I've always been. So take you some tracks and just do it. Just do it. As you know, I'm under the weather, and you're going to have to have me excused so I don't want to distribute my sickness to you. We got a fellowship downstairs, some food and drink for you. And What a privilege to be able to sign this as a pastor of this church and include you to send this young man to where God has called him to go. Now, our, our responsibility is to help him, to pray for him. We need to pray for this young man daily. It's not going to be all bed and roses where he's going. <laughs> the devil's going to fight him tooth and neck. He's going to have enemies. And we need to uphold him in prayer. Not only our missionaries here, but our other missionaries that's fighting the battle, fighting the devil tooth and nail. So, so we, members of the Community Baptist Church of Oliver Springs, Tennessee, and represent ministries to to now, before the presence of God, commend Gregory by laying on of hands to our, our, our Savior's service as stated in the Scripture. So, he's a member of the, uh, the, uh, the missionary family of the community. Aren't we honored? Nine families out of our church. Look at, we don't have nobody. I, we're blessed. We're blessed that God would honor us in that way. What good would it be them sitting here on the pew? 
That's what it's all about. Local New Testament church. Get them saved, get them in, teach them, send them out. Send them out. You say, well, God hasn't called me. Oh, yes, he has. And this is our mission field. He might have not called you to Mongolia. He might not have called you to Papua New Guinea. But he's called you to be a witness here. And when we win them here and bring them here, then God will touch their heart and there'll be more sent out. Ain't that right, James? Yeah. If, a, if, a, if an old Marine can understand that, surely you guys can. Amen. All right. Here's your, here it is, son. Come and get it. And we're here if you need us. So we're going to, you're going to go downstairs and I guess that's your pretty pen. No, that's mine, isn't it? Yeah. Is that yours, the gold? How can I have that? I t- try to take everything I can get. You know, it's hard to find a good pen. You know that? So uh, we're going to go. Let's all stand. And y'all excuse me because it's not that I don't want to go down or buy. I don't know if what I got is contagious or not, but I wouldn't want to be guilty of giving you one. This is sicker I've ever been in my life. And the longest I've been sick. And I'm going to go to the doctor next week if I don't get better. I, I hate to go to the doctors because they always find probably my, I got a heart trouble or something or my liver's not liver. Daniel, would you thank the Lord for the good service, for the call of this young man, and then pray for our food and the fellowship downstairs. Amen. And, and Gregory will begin getting our uh, home missionary support the moment he starts his deportation. You're dismissed. Go downstairs. Have a good time. Enjoy yourself. Eat till your heart's, your belly's full. I love you, sweetie. I love